Hello everyone, I know you're desperate to see the Lamborghini and believe me, so am I. But the simple fact of the matter is that without the help of the many companies that have supported this channel, all of this couldn't have happened. So I need to say an extra big thank you to Carly for sponsoring today's video. So what is Carly? Fairly simple. It's this universal OBD2 compliant dongle and an app for your mobile phone. What it's best known for is its coding and diagnostics capabilities. To actually use Carly couldn't be any simpler. You purchase the dongle for £65 plus shipping. You put it into your OBD2 port. You turn on the car, turn on the app, and you are connected. Now there's two different versions of this software. There is a free one, which will let you see all of the things that you can do to the car, and then a paid for version, which unlocks all of the functionality. To get a health report on your car, it's easy. You connect everything up, press the health check button, and this will talk to all of the car's different ECUs and give you a full and detailed report. Far more in-depth than you'd get for any sort of standard off-the-shelf OBD2 reader. And helpfully, Carly will also translate all of the error codes, telling you exactly what it is that's going on. And in terms of the maintenance side of things, it's very handy too. I recently had to change the battery in this, and with modern BMWs, they need to know what battery's in the car so they can charge it in the right way and look after it and prolong its life. Well, most main dealers are going to charge you a fair amount to do that, but with Carly, if you've got the paid version, you can do it yourself in a couple of minutes. Coding with Carly is quick and simple and can unlock features even on older cars like my One Series, where I've enabled auto folding wing mirrors. Now you can pick a license either for a single brand of vehicles or for all of them. Now if you want only a single brand, it works out at less than five pound a month or for all of them, just over six quid. And the fact is that if you use this really more than I think once a year, it does actually work out of being a lot cheaper than going to any sort of mechanic because for basic diagnostics work, I've known BMW dealers to charge well over £100 and that's information you could get straight away from Carly. So there we go. That's a little bit about their app, some of the things that you can do. I want to say a big thank you to them for making a very nice contribution to my Lamborghini fund. Now let's head off and go see what's happening with it. Hello everybody, today's quite an exciting video for me really, it's not often I get to make things with a typical YouTuber title, but today I can, because we are going to be looking at everything wrong with my Lamborghini Gallardo, which I'm fairly confident is one of the, if not the, cheapest Gallardos in the world, or at least cheapest Gallardos that actually work and don't have a horrible history with insurance write-offs and all sorts of things plaguing them. And now that's not to say that my car is issue free, in fact, quite the opposite is true. In the first video I made on the car where I revealed that I bought it, I told you some of the things that had happened to it with multiple engine rebuilds and a very, very large dose of bad luck for the dealer that I bought it from. Now, I first became aware of that car when I was here at AV Engineering last year because it was Aldous and the team who actually did the rebuild on the car, the one that worked. Now, because he'd been so closely associated with the car and I knew of the quality of his work as he'd also done some bits for me on the 550 and seen through glasses 360, I wanted to make sure if I did buy the car that Aldous would be happy to continue working on it because as a YouTuber, believe it or not, I don't have an unlimited budget, so I need a decent, high quality workshop that's going to give me honest answers and decent prices. And that's kind of what I get when I come down to AV. So I'm going to hand you over to Aldous, who's going to take you through just a few of the lowlights of my lovely 2004 Lamborghini Gallardo. Right, where to start? Um... You know, sometimes in life you actually regret saying yes to, uh, to people and taking things on. This was one of those things and well, actually turned up well over a year ago. So it was um, November, December 2018, no 2019, sorry. Um, and it just wasn't running. It was misfiring. It was pouring smoke out the, um, out the back. Um, it didn't make any power whatsoever. Um, stripped the engine down, pulled it out, stripped the engine down, and pretty much everything was knackered in it. And as we did some investigation, it was clear that whoever had been working on it in the past just didn't know what they were doing. So to give you an idea of how 
um, tight those piston rings were in the, um, in the bore, we put a torque wrench on the um, crank and it took 100 newton meters to actually crank the engine over. It was a, it's a wonder that it actually ran at all. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was that. So it was pretty much a, almost a non, no expense spared rebuild. Um, it was expensive, um, but it was a thing, we wanted to approach it in a way that we would actually guarantee it. So I've, I'm guaranteeing this engine for, uh, for a period of time. <laughs> um, but I wanted to do, rather than have somebody else take the engine out and be brought here and then build it and give it to somebody else, I wanted to be responsible for end to end for them from taking it out, diagnosing it, repairing it and putting it back together and again and commissioning it. So it's, it was here for about a year and it's been a long arduous journey. Um, and, um, but we're finally there with it, I think. It actually, actually drives, apart from some of the suspension bits and pieces, it actually drives really well. And I don't think it's ever driven like this um, for a very long time, actually, given, um, given the state of it. So, um, but that's not to say that there aren't, uh, there aren't still problems. And I was saying to you earlier, it's a, it's a real shame I didn't know that we were going to be given a different mandate with this car that you've given to us, because there's a lot of stuff that I would have done whilst the engine was out to, um, to fix some of the bits and pieces, um, one of which is to replace the AC compressor, which is a bit of a, um, bit of a pain, but um, there we go. We're there, we've got to fix it, so um, that's it. Um, the list isn't too horrendous about where we are now, so we've got uh, a bit of a list here. Um, it says 20 items, and actually 22 because I've um, fixed uh, a couple of bits that were missing on there, but um, we've kind of got it into three sections where stuff that we're doing now so that you can actually start enjoying the car and put some miles on it and, um, and bed that engine in. Um, stuff that needs to be done when it goes away and um, you start using it, but in the near future, and then some sort of long-term stuff, which is mainly cosmetic things, but, and there's some real kind of, I don't know, you just think, what were they thinking when that happened? <laughs> Moments, you know, so um, I'll just rattle through what, we've, uh, what we're doing. Um, you asked us to do a service on it now, and you asked us to do a full service. Now, there's not a lot point in doing replacing the spark plugs because we've replaced them when we did the engine. You know, we're not replacing the belt or the coolant and stuff like that because that was all replaced very, very recently. But we've done an oil oil filter and air filter change. Um, there's some bits and pieces. Your third brake light wasn't working, so the uh, the little brake light in the middle there. Um, that was actually a surprise. That's actually out of an Audi A6 Avant, and it's twice as expensive to buy it from Audi than it is from Lamborghini. So 50 versus 100 pounds. Um, so that was a nice little kind of part surprise there. Um, and Italian car ownership is full of little surprises there. You think, oh my God, how can that be either so expensive or so cheap? But that one was, um, that was quite good. Um, your reverse lights aren't working and that's um, a broken uh, wire on the loom, so I'm waiting for a connector to come to, um, to fix that. Um, we sorted out all the trim in the engine bay, so this was all not fitted, and in the last video you would have seen it uh, in its sort of bare state. So we've got these side panels in, I had to fabricate some mounting brackets for that. These were all bashed in, um, so we've had these panel beaten out and refinished, so um, they, uh, they're looking much better. Um, there is another panel that we've got to go in, uh, go in here, but um, that's, uh, that's out because I've got to get to the wire for the reversing light down there. Um, now, you're <laughs> filling this up with petrol is a chore, <laughs> as James will um, attest. So you put the, put the nozzle in at the pump and you'll probably get about two or three seconds worth of, of pumping before it clicks off. Um, the breather um, is just not working in the, um, in the tank. Now that's been traced to the fuel canister that sits, um, sits under here. Now they're actually on back order at Lamborghini at the moment. So to get it working, what I've done is actually cut that open and got rid of all the old charcoal out of it, put some fresh charcoal in, cleaned all the filters, glued it all back together again, and that's, um, that's sorted now. But we do need to wait for that, uh, um, that proper canister to turn up so that we can get that fitted. Um, Driver's seat adjustment, that wasn't working at all. It was kind of set, sat, you sat so upright, you were just sort of tilted forward a little bit too much and it was really uncomfortable. Um, so anybody that knows about these cars, there's, there's different types of seats. These are the manual seats with the electric backrest adjustment. Um, I was dreading it being the motor 
but we pulled it apart and it was actually someone had just left the connector disconnected. So that was a nice, easy fix. Um, so that's working, uh, working now. Um, your passenger seat sounds like it's got a mouse in it. Um, I need to strip that apart and hopefully it hasn't got a mouse in it, but um, we're giving this car, you never know. Um, we've got a rattle from the outside of the car that we're fixing, that's this spoiler here. So um, this is supposed to have um, an electrically adjusted spoiler. It's not, none of the mechanism is in place in here. This has just got some kind of jerry-rigged brackets in here and they had worked their way loose. So we've um, tightened those up and readjusted it so it's looking kind of decent at the moment. But um, if you want this working properly, then um, it needs a motor that goes in the front of the um, boot lid and some cables and some special brackets and stuff in here. Um, but that's no longer rattling around anymore. Um, you'll notice when you're driving it, it's, it was very rattly over bumps and your front um, arms, um, the ball joints in them were loose and actually the inner um, flam blocks were worn as well. They've been sent off for refurbishment. Um, they'll be back in, um, in a week or so. Um, many Lamborghini owners will um, attest to this, very common for these grills to come loose. This one was actually hanging off. So um, when we drove it, um, drove it on the test drive, it actually fell out. Um, so that's got to be sorted, that's been sorted, so we've actually just fabricated little brackets to um, screw these on, but these are notorious for just um, working their way loose, the whole car, the engine bay is all vibrating and that, and these are held on with horrible little plastic clips. Um, yeah, bag light was on when I picked it up from the dealer, <laughs> um, which uh, it's actually been on, on and off for um, the entire time it's been here. Um, it's high resistance in the driver's airbag, which is usually the clock spring. Now, normally we would just say, oh, let's just get a clock spring, um, put it in. And it is actually an Audi part, but it's 400 pounds, which is quite a lot to pay for a clock spring. So we just, um, I just took it apart, cleaned all the contacts up, and that's all good for now. And um, one of the sensors in the engine has actually become a, come adrift. So the actual electrical connectors come off so we're replacing that, that's the, um, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, that's, that's just come off. So that needs um, a new one of those. Um, this is actually to do with the variable valve timing system. It's, the sensor itself is a generic Audi part. It's used on most petrol um, VW engines that are made in the last 20 years, so they're very cheap. So that's kind of what we're doing now. Um, things that I think you need to do um, in the near future your tyres are awful. They're just, yeah, just terrible. <laughs> Working our way around to the front of the car, this is really important. Um, so you can see we've got the, um, got the arms off at the moment. Um, they've been sent away. Now, in the front, I don't know, you probably can't see because of the, um, uh, because of the camera angle, but where the, um, where the radiator is, there's supposed to be a shroud that fits behind the um, behind the grill here so that it channels the air onto the radiator and then another shroud at the back that channels the air out of the back of the radiator and into the wheel arch and um, they, those are missing the front and rear shrouds and the wheel arch is broken on the back and it's missing on both sides we really need to get this sorted because at the moment the airflow is going to be hitting the radiator and just bouncing off and firing into the um, into the cabin in, uh, the compartment inside here. So you can do any sort of running in the um, um, in the warm weather. We need to get that sorted. We need to get the grills on the um, wheel arch liners sorted because you're going to be driving on the road. You can get stones flick up and it will just um, sort the um, uh, uh, screw the fan up in um, in very short order. So that's that. Um, your front under tray is missing. There's a big um, sort of T-shaped under tray at the front. That really needs to be sorted because you're going to be getting, you really need that to kind of sort the airflow out underneath the car. Um, and it's just, um, yeah, it's just, it's not, you'll, I think you'll probably, you'll definitely feel a benefit by having the um, flat underfloor on the front of the car. Um, I mean, you sort the AC compressor out. So you, again, you're going to be using it in the summer. We need, um, you need air conditioning and we need to sort that out. And I wish we'd sorted that out when the engine was out because that's a real, um, a real pain to do. But um, it's, um, it's certainly doable. We don't have to take the engine out, which is, um, which is good. Um, and that is actually another Audi part. 
So although they're expensive from Audi, there are um, people making generic items. So we can probably get one of those for about, I don't know, about 300 quid or something like that. So that's not the end of the world at all. And then um, your kind of long-term bits are generally cosmetic bits. Um, my first item here is the right-hand side door mirror is broken. So a bit of a funny story that, well, this car was actually parked um, over there in the workshop and nobody was near it. And we suddenly heard a clattering and the mirror had just given up and fallen out onto the floor. Um, so we rep we've repaired it, but it doesn't move. It's just basically sort of glued and bonded and screwed in, in place. Um, but at some point that's gonna give up again. So um, you're gonna to need to look for a, uh, a new door mirror. Um, the spoiler mechanism, we've, um, we've been through that. Um, we've got rear bumpers, it's taken a knock at some point. So you can see that here, that's uh, gonna to need to be fixed up. The badge is hanging off, which is uh, not great, but it's easily fixed. Um, the rear under trays are missing, so there's two under trays on the left and right of the engine, um, they're missing. And then th this is one where you just think, what on earth were they thinking? The, the vents and the dash are glued shut, so they're just, you just can't get any um, air out of them. So that's, uh, they, we're going to need some new dash vents. But apart from that, she's a minter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's had a hard life, but I'm looking forward to actually bringing her back and actually getting her into, um, into the best condition that we can. So. Yeah, could be worse. So a big thank you to Aldous, not only for appearing in the film, but also taking care of this car once more. I think I'm going to christen it the Bloomerang, because uh, no matter what you do, if you throw it away, it will just come straight back to you. Now, there are still a few other bits that I've spotted while I've had the car. Like, most frustratingly, somebody has welded the two pieces of the gear lever together, the ball and the stick. And that drives me nuts, and unfortunately, it's something like about 800 pounds to change. Now, these arms here, we are sorting out, as Aldous said, we're gonna have them sent off. There's a company called VPS, and they're specialists in doing these things. I have decided that I think what we're gonna do is just get all of the arms off, get the whole thing refreshed and done, so this car is absolutely tip-top, because this should handle really nicely once it's done, and I would hate to go to all this effort and trouble and get Aldous to do all this stuff, and then have a car that still wasn't as good as it should be. Now, some of these parts are not actually available from Lamborghini, or if you do want to replace the arms, they want you to just replace the entire thing. They will not sell you a ball joint or the little bushings for them. But luckily, there are solutions on the aftermarket for it. Uh, people said that Ferrari 430 uh, bushings will work on these, and I believe they will, but we're actually gonna go with the solution from VPS. One mystery, that remains though, is the color of this car. Now in the first video, I said that I believed this car had had a color change because, well, there's plenty of evidence to say that that is the case because there's lots and lots of splotches of red all over this car. There's some in the engine bay, you'll have seen in the first video. Heck, there's even pieces of it here. Now, if this car had had just merely a cheap respray, well, you wouldn't probably find evidence of that under here because they wouldn't have got this far. And I did an HPI check on this car when I bought it just to make sure that it wasn't a write-off or hiding anything like that. What I got back was a clean HPI check. This car hasn't got anything to worry about. And it took me a few days to realize, but that actually includes the color because if a car gets color changed, that will be flagged when you run an HPI check. And this car wasn't flagging and it's registered as blue. So I phoned up a Lamborghini main dealer, gave them the registration and VIN number. They checked it and they said, yes, this car should be blue Salem, which is the shade that it is. So it's almost certainly had some paintwork at some point, there may be one or two pieces, like we believe that the actual engine lid is not original, but this car's in its correct color. So what the source of the red is, we don't know. Is this a red primer? I mean, I would have thought that you wouldn't use red primer on a blue car, but then I'm not a specialist in these sorts of things. That's why I bring the car to other people. So if you happen to know why my car might be red underneath, do let me know. And um, it's also given me more pause for thought because now I know that this is the car's correct color, I'm far less want to actually change it. And everyone 
comments on this and how nice the color is and how different it is for a Lamborghini. So there we have it. That's a little update on just a few of the things that we're gonna be doing with this lovely beastie. Uh, big thank you to you for watching. A huge thank you to Aldous and the team here at AV Engineering for saving my bacon once again. We will be back here in a little while to see how the car's doing. And hopefully next time I come here, I may actually be taking it away. That'd be very nice. Uh, in the meantime, please comment down below and we'll see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.